Namaste and welcome to United Hospital Jainagar, uh, Bangalore. Today with us we have Dr. Pavan Prasad BK, consultant surgical oncologist who uh, is going to speak about sarcoma. And uh, let me also tell you that uh, sarcoma is uh, celebrated today. This month, July month is for sarcoma awareness month also. Doctor, thank you so much for being with us this evening. So, what is sarcoma, doctor? Uh, good evening, everyone. So, sarcoma, as the name suggests, sarcos, it's derived from the Greek word sarcos meaning flesh, oma meaning tumor. So, okay. it's a fleshy tumor. So, basically, it is a tumor arising from the embryological mesenchymal cells. So mesenchymal cells are those which make up the connective tissues of the body. Okay. So we have both soft tissues and the hard tissue in the body. Hmm. So among the soft tissues, we have the skin, the muscle, fat, blood vessels and among the hard tissue, we have the bone. Hmm. So soft tissue sarcoma is the most common form of sarcoma which arises from any of these soft tissues. Any of the soft tissues. Okay. So what, what consists of soft tissues, if you can just yeah. explain a little like more. The, the soft tissues include the subcutaneous fat, muscle, arteries, veins and lymphatics. So basically this is a connective tissue which provides support and structural integrity to the organ. Along with that it helps in the process of healing. Healing also. Yeah. So and what are the different types of sarcomas? Again broadly we can classify sarcomas into soft tissue sarcomas and bone sarcomas. Soft tissue sarcomas like I said any sarcoma arising from any of these soft tissue structures is uh, almost 90 percent of the sarcomas are soft tissue sarcomas and 10 percent arise from the bone. Okay and uh, what is the risk factor of sarcoma? So, uh, again it's a like it's a very rare malignancy exact uh, risk factor cannot be pinpointed out mm. but a few known risk factors which can be attributable to sarcoma include like physical factors like ionizing radiation. So it was observed that survivors of Hiroshima and Nagasaki atomic bombing, mm -hmm. they were almost 50 to 60 times at a higher rate of developing, higher rate of risk of developing sarcomas. Mm -hmm. So ionizing radiation definitely is one of the risk factors, but it has a long latency. Suppose it's not like if we get exposed today to radiation and immediately we develop sarcoma. It has a long latency period. Okay. So based on the dosage of uh, external irradiation, and also the time duration, all these factors have an impact. And among the chemical fact, chemical causes, we have these uh, herbicides like phenoxy acetic acid and uh, previously thorotrast was used as a contrast agent for imaging. So thorotrast, arsenide, vinyl chloride, all these are a few chemical agents mm -hmm. which have a higher propensity to cause sarcoma. Okay. And we have a few biological factors like one of the viruses called the herpes virus HHV8, okay. human herpes virus 8, which is a, a causative factor of a type of sarcoma called the Kaposi sarcoma. Mm -hmm. And also, of course, uh, there are a few hereditary syndromes which are associated with sarcoma. A few examples are leaf romani syndrome, Cowden syndrome, Carney Strataki syndrome, hereditary retinoblastoma syndrome. So if these syndromes are running in the families, these patients are at higher risk of developing sarcomas. Sarcoma. What are the symptoms? How can sarcoma be diagnosed? And that. So it depends on the location from where the tumor is arising. Hmm. Suppose if it is in the extremity, like if we take the overall distribution of sarcomas, almost 50% of sarcomas arise among the extremities, that is the upper limb or the lower limb. Okay. So if we notice a swelling, a recent onset swelling hmm. which is say more than 3 cm in size rapidly growing and if it is deep seated like deeper to the muscle compartment and causing compression symptoms on the nerves. Hmm. So these are the symptoms of extremity sarcoma hmm. whereas if it is arising in the abdomen so it can have compressive symptoms like the patient can have intestinal obstruction on and off okay. and there can be a bit mass in the abdomen which is progressive. Mm. So these are a few symptoms of sarcoma. Again it depends on the location where the sarcoma is arising. Because as you said it can affect any organ exactly. in the body. Yeah. So so what what is the way of uh, finding out like CT, MRI or yeah. something like that? So again 
uh, first and foremost, we would like to go by the clinical examination. Mm. Just because the swelling is located on the extremity doesn't mean that it is a soft Sir. tissue sarcoma. Okay. Uh, benign tumors, benign soft tissue tumors are almost 100 times more common than their malignant counterparts. Mm. What I mean to say is, if it is a skin tumor which is recently developed, it can be anything like a lipoma, which is a benign tumor. Right, right. So, common things are more common. So, we cannot directly jump to a conclusion that it is a it sarcoma. Could be sarcoma. Mm. So, there are various imaging techniques. I, uh, we can, like, it depends on the site. So, if it is the extremity, we usually order an MRI. Mm. So, MRI will give us a clear picture as to where exactly is the location of the tumor, what is its relation to the underlying bone and also the surrounding neurovascular structures, mm. whether is it, it is in close proximity to the nerve or the blood vessel around it. Mm. So these are the details which can be well made out on MRI for extremity sarcoma. So MRI is good enough For to extremities. Okay. Yeah. So if it is arising from the abdomen, mm. so intra-abdominal organs, so, so sometimes uh, sarcomas can arise from the terminal part of the small intestine, mm. it can arise from the stomach. So in these cases, we would like to get a CT scan. So CT okay. scan will give a better picture than an MRI mm. in the abdomen. Mm. Suppose if it is retroperitoneum, that is the retroperitoneum is the space around which the kidneys and the pancreas lie. Okay. So if it is arising from that region, again a CT gives a better picture rather than an MRI. Than an MRI, okay. What are the types of biopsies that can be performed in sarcoma? So again, uh, we would like to take a good amount of tissue. Mm. So uh, again, the biopsy should be done by an experienced person who deals with sarcomas because a wrong biopsy can end up in an amputation. So oh. many times a wrong sighted biopsy or a misdirected biopsy has caused the tumor to spread. So it has to be done by a person who is experienced in handling sarcomas. So we have uh, uh, the most commonly performed procedure is the core needle biopsy or the true cut biopsy wherein a small needle say mm. around uh, 21 to 23 gauge needle under local anesthesia is driven into the tumor okay. and a small chunk of tissue is taken out and sent for histopathological analysis. Mm. So this is one of the most commonly performed uh, procedures and there is one more technique called the fine needle aspiration cytology. So it is a smaller needle, using a smaller needle, we just aspirate the cells from the tumor. But again, core needle biopsy gives us a better diagnostic yield of tissue than a fine needle aspiration cytology. As the name suggests, it's just the cells which we aspirate in FNAC. Whereas in true cut biopsy, we have a good amount of tissue through which we can actually know uh, what is the type of sarcoma, what are its characteristics how well is it differentiated meaning to say how much does it resemble the normal tissue mm. so the grade of differentiation so these are the things which help us to uh, know the overall picture well so true cut biopsy or core needle biopsy is the most preferred technique and accordingly the treatment can be so it, it gives way. us a it gives us a it shows us the way like what type of sarcoma it is and mm. how much is it differentiated meaning to say how much is it resembling the normal tissue mm -hmm. so all these are prognostic importance also mm. so our therapeutic decision and prognostic implication all these depend on the histology so definitely it has got a very important role important role uh, what is the staging in sarcoma so depends on the location Again. so there's broadly there is one system called anaking system of classic staging so whether it is inside the muscle compartment or outside the muscle compartment call it intra compartment or extra compartment okay. so this is one uh, simple staging system apart from that based on the site of the tumor there are dif uh, different stagings like for example if it is in the head and region we have a different staging if it is in the retroperitoneum, it has a different staging and it is based on the size of the tumor, its relation to its surrounding structures. So again, staging goes by the location. By and large, to be uh, in simple terms, if it is confined to the organ, it is early stage. If it is infiltrating the surrounding structures, it is a bit aggressive. Mm. If it has gone beyond the organ of origin to other organs, for example, uh, limb sarcoma going into lungs mm. is an advanced disease. So yes. it's a metastatic disease. Stage 4 is what we call. So uh, are there some patients who come to you at stage 4? Quite often it happens because sarcomas 
most of the times uh, it are, these are deep seated so mm. it takes quite a long time to attain a considerable the size for the person to notice it for the symptoms to exactly. actually be noticed so by then it would have already through the blood stream spread to lungs mm. so again uh, when in uh, ct scanning of the chest is mandatory in any sarcoma so that we won't miss the lung disease yes which is very important exactly yes. what is the survival rate at different stages so in, it depends on the stage like you said so early stage sarcoma or stage stage 1 stage 2 if it is localized disease it has a good survival so close to a five year survival is close to 50 to 70% but as the stage increases in stage 4 five year survival is less than 10% mm. so early stage has got a better prognosis and survival late stage it has worse i i think uh, that works with all kind of yeah. uh, cancers and tumors like that uh can sarcoma also affect children is there a age group definitely so overall in adults less than 1% of all the cancers constitute sarcoma mm. so it's a rare disease among adults in the pediatric age group close to 5 to 7% of all the cancers among the pediatric age group mm. so constitute sarcomas so when you say pediatric it's uh yeah less than 16 to 18 years of age less than 16 less than that of, below 18 yeah. plus is uh, where it affects the most so children so are to affected 5 to 7% of pediatric malignancies are sarcomas are sarcomas and only 1% in adults, adults. is uh, visible yeah. and i think that is why it takes a longer time for uh, an adult to realize that it's sarcoma exactly. because it's not uh, it's basically a rare disease rare disease and the symptoms go more with a benign tumor so most of the times they would have noticed a small lump which would be neglected mm. until and unless it progresses yeah. to cause some disability mm. uh, doesn't come to the notice okay so for example if if it's on the limb mm-hmm. and uh, people may say it's lipoma or something exactly and they just let it be yeah so what is the worst condition when the patient realizes that i need to go and consult now so there will be sudden onset of increase in the size of the swelling okay or there might be uh, compressive symptoms like the tumor might be pressing on the nerves and muscles affecting his activities okay the movement the movement of the, the limbs of the limb. or sometimes it can have a uh, metastatic presentation so it might have spread to the lung and persistently patient will be having cough or a uh, blood in the sputum mm. so these are the few things which prompt us that it might be a sarcoma okay and abnormally dilated veins over the swelling mm. so these are a few clues which uh, direct us so we have to look out for uh some growth some external growth or something like i said 100 times benign tumors are more common than malignant mm. counterparts mm. so common things are more common i keep stressing this so yes. it might uh, only when it is say more than 3 or 4 cm deep seated rapidly growing causing uh, symptoms like compression of uh, the surrounding muscles and blood vessels affecting the movement mm. so these are the warning signs which should not be ignored ignored yes and uh, as you just heard uh, dr pavan prasad say tell you you know and uh, give you all the warning signs and also knowing that this is a rare disease uh, please look out for these warning signs look out for the symptoms and do come over to united hospital and consult dr pavan prasad please take an appointment and uh, thank you for joining us thank you so much doctor for spending your evening with us thank you. and uh, making us all aware of what sarcoma actually is so thank you everyone for being there and uh, have a good evening stay safe thank you namaste thank you